Many years ago, I went to college. It was fall of 1984, and I was enrolled to study fine art and graphic design. And I took a variety of drawing classes and painting classes and graphic design classes at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. I was 18 years old, and the way I understood it was you go to college, you get a bachelor's in fine arts, and then you have become an artiste. And it was that simple. Well, what I've discovered over the years is that's not the truth. A BFA, a bachelor's in fine arts, does not make you an artist. That being said, do you need to go to college to become an artist? Well, what I discovered in college was that they teach you foundational skills of art. They teach you the basics of foundations, basics and foundations in composition, color theory, layout, design, how to look at a piece of artwork and things like that. Those things I did find beneficial, and many of the foundational skills that I used at a young age came in, have come in really handy over the years. But to become an artist, being an artist isn't about your education. There's a lot more to being an artist than just sitting in a classroom with an instructor saying, now this is how you draw the female breast. This is how you draw a foot. You know, uh, this is how the body is composed. What I've discovered on my own over the years <clears throat> is that the, the title of artist is much more than just the creative part of it. And I know a lot of younger people will hear this and go, oh, you're not going to start telling me that there's, there's more to being an artist and I've got to learn the business side of it and I've got to learn about marketing and advertising and I've got to learn to network. Bingo. You've got to learn all those things because when you're an artist, when you're a fine artist especially, if you're painting, drawing, sculpting, any of those creative processes, you don't have a big financial machine behind you pushing you, promoting you, and creating you, creating persona for you. Like in the music business, if you're a, if you're a musician and you're lucky enough to get signed by one of the big record companies, the record companies see something in you, and that's dollar signs. They see dollar signs in you. And in order for them to make money off of you, you become their product and they put billions and millions and zillions of dollars behind you to push you as the artist, the musician, the singer, the dancer, whatever it happens to be that they're selling on their new record label. So they've got to push it and push it and push it and push it. And you've got all this marketing, this marketing company behind you. You've got a distribution company that dis distributes your music. You have, um, they have outlets and connections to all kinds of people to give you an image, put you in clothing, put makeup on you, give you a new name. You know, if your name is Peter Tompkins, they'll call you Bill the Bullet or something. You know, they'll give you some really weird name that everybody likes if you're a rap star or whatever like that. And they create a new image for you. Then they go out and they push it and they market it. But when you're a painter, you're on your own. You got nobody. And if you, if you get lucky... And you happen to meet somebody who owns a gallery that likes your work. They they may put some time and effort into into marketing you once you're in their gallery, or you may end up getting an agent or have somebody who manages your work, like a spouse or a friend or a relative. But that's really rare. There's not many people in your family that's going to really want to put in the time and effort into your artwork because number one, most people that aren't artists don't understand the artistic process and they have no interest in it and they're not going to want to devote their time to it. So college will give you foundational skills that will help you learn the basics of drawing and learn the basics of color, color theory and, and composition and things like that and it will help you build a foundation off of it. But the one thing that's vital to becoming an artist that has nothing to do with a degree, that has nothing to do with college, is you have to have some ability. You have to have some an innate skill. You may wish and wish and wish you could be an artist, and it's your dream, and it's what you've always wanted to do. 
But if you don't have a natural ability to understand what they're teaching you in school, you can wish all you want. You can wish in one hand and crap in the other and let me know which one gets filled first. I, I'm kind of a purist, and I think if you don't have the ability to be an artist, if you don't have an, an innate ability that was born into you to understand the theories and principles of art, then you're not going to make it very far. But that being said, let me give an example where I don't think that that's the case. Um, several years ago, I was at an art festival, and I was selling my photography, and I was doing really well. I was selling a lot of my art, my artwork, my, my photography. And the lady in the booth across from us had bought a whole bunch of propane tanks, empty pro ta propane tanks, and she had dressed them up as ladybugs and butterflies and Godzillas and little animals and elephants. And what she had done is she had painted them and put googly eyes on them and wings and all this stuff. And she was selling these propane tanks dressed up like animals and bugs, like hotcakes. The question you got to ask yourself is, is that really art? That's a craft. But does it take a lot of skill and imagination and technique and form and stuff like that to know how, how and where to place googly eyes on an empty propane tank? No. She was making a killing. I bet you she sold 100 propane tanks that were selling anywhere from $75 to $250 a pop. Especially the one that was a bunch of propane tanks soldered together to make it look like a caterpillar. That one for like 500 bucks or something like that. So, no, did she have to go to school to learn that? No, absolutely not. She, she either saw it online and decided to do it for herself, or she found some kits where they send her empty, cleaned-up propane tanks, and she put it together herself. I don't know, but that's not art. I, to me, that's not art. But she can make a living at it. If you want to be a true, pure artist, you've got to wear multiple hats. Number one, you've got to work in your craft. Being an artist is about repetition. If you have the innate ability and you know you have it and you have that desire, that understanding, that feeling, when you go into an art class and the teacher says to you, Pete, um, if you only put that nipple a little bit further to the right, your composition will be perfect. And if you understand the instructions, if you understand the concepts and you get it and it, and it speaks to you, then you've got something. If you have that kind of ability, but if somebody comes up to you and says, hey, you know, you really should move that nipple over to the right, and you're confused by it, and you don't understand what they're talking about, you don't understand about why you shouldn't put this color next to that color, or why uh, this color will make a, a, a painting look heavier, and you should put the heavier, darker uh, pigments at the bottom, and the lighter colors at the top, and you don't comprehend that stuff, then you're going to really struggle as an artist. And, and you may want to say, hey, you know what, I don't understand this. You may want to try something else. But if you have those abilities and if you have those skills, the next thing you've got to work on is your craft. But once you have a craft and you have something down where, you, where you're really confident in what you're doing, you absolutely positively have to work on a couple of other things. One of them is networking. You have to know how to network. That's the benefit of college. In college, if I were to do it all over again, I would join all the social clubs I could and I would meet with professors and meet with teachers, meet with groups, and join artistic groups on campus. Because a lot of what happens out in the real world, it's all about networking. For instance, you should join a fraternity or sorority or some type of social group in school so you know how to socialize. Because a lot of us artists, are, we're very withdrawn, we're very reclusive. But you can't be. If you really want to go out there and make something of yourself, you have to know how to talk to people. And I say join a fraternity because I joined Theta Chi fraternity on the campus of Ohio University, the Alpha Tau chapter. And if I hadn't joined the fraternity, I wouldn't have met Logan Rogers. And if I hadn't met Logan Rogers, I would have never made my first documentary, The Artist. He made that movie possible. And in many ways he did. It was my idea, but I walked up to him and I said, do you want to make this film about what it's like to be an artist? He said, sure, let me introduce you to a couple other people. And the movie took off. It wasn't quite that simple, but it's, that's kind of how it works, that's how net, hot sound networking works. The other thing you've got to do outside of school is learn how to market 
learn how to advertise, learn about money, learn how to balance your budget, learn how to project your budget. You have to know a lot of things about business to be an artist. It's not just about creating. Um, because you've got to, say you go into an art show, like the art fairs cost money. They cost anywhere from $150 a table to some of the bigger ones, $500, $1,200, depending on how popular the, the art show is. So you've got to figure, okay, I'm investing, let's say $500 in this show. So you know you've got to sell at least $500 worth of, of your creations to break even. Everything above and beyond that would be profit, but then you've got to understand taxes. Most of these places you get paid under the table. So yeah, I'm not saying to, to not declare it. You should declare that money, but most of us don't. You're getting paid on the table with cash. Nobody knows about it, but you have to understand the taxes in your state. You have to understand city, state, local, federal taxes. You've got to understand how to market your stuff online. You've got to understand, you know, how much money you've invested in stuff. If the canvas costs you 25 bucks and then the paints, the paints are expensive. It's sometimes 25 to $50 a tube, depending on how big the tube of paint. If you go through several tubes of paint, you've put, sometimes people put, not including your own time, you put two, three, four, five hundred dollars of paint, including the brushes and the canvas and everything into one painting. So you've got to figure out, so how do I mark up that price to make a profit off of it? Back to networking, you've got to know how to network. A lot of artists think if they walk into some guy's gallery, let's say this guy is known to sell uh, paintings of bananas, okay? And all you do are paintings of strawberries. And you walk into this guy's gallery blind, cold. He doesn't know who you are. And you say, hey, I've got these great paintings of strawberries. Would you put them up in your gallery? And he's, he, he'll say to you, well, you obviously didn't do your research. I only do painting, sell paintings of bananas, so I'm sorry. They look like really nice, but we're not, we're not interested in your work. And this comes into play with networking, you've got to get, go out and get to know people. You've got to talk to them. I mean, because what if you had gone to a couple of showings at this guy's gallery and you talked to him and, he, and, and, you, and he, you showed him your work on your phone or in, on your laptop and he goes, you know, we well, only do bananas, but we were thinking about doing some strawberries. Maybe if you establish a relationship with these people, you could find out that you can get in that gallery, but they're, they're not going to teach you stuff like that in college. This is stuff you have to know that you're not going to learn in college. The college is not going to teach you how to market yourself, how to network, how to network with, with gallery owners, things like that. I'll give you an example. There's a gallery in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and they do all they sell are paintings of bison and elk and, and then animals of that area in Wyoming. And if you walked into that gallery, and, and the stuff that is in that gallery is excellent. It's excellent artwork. These are beautiful acrylic oil paintings, pen and ink drawings. These are well done, well thought out, well composed. I know if I walked in there now with my painting of, I don't know, a painting of a piano player, they'd be like, why did you bring that in here? We don't sell piano players. So what I'm saying is you, you've got to really know how to read your audience and know what they're looking for and know how to talk to them. There's, the, there's a really good chance that you would never get in that gallery unless you did magnificent paintings of elk or bison or local wildlife in the Jackson Hole area. But college is not necessarily for everybody. College is not going to teach you to be an artist. College will give you the foundational skills to show you how to do the basics. And then they'll kind of push you out the door and say, good luck. And once you get out in the real world, most artists quit. They, this, this is too overwhelming. It's too much. I had a friend from my freshman year who was a phenomenal artist. Her name was Dorothy. And we stayed friends for the first couple of years. And then we lost track of each other because I changed my degree to business. And then a few years ago, I looked her up on the internet. It turns out she got married abandoned her art and her and her husband now own a refuse company it's like a trash company and she was very talented young lady um and what you're going to find when you get out there you th you think 
that if you paint it or if you build it or if you sculpt it, they will come and they will buy it. But that's not the truth. It's absolutely not true. You could be the most gifted, talented, skilled artist and people will want nothing to do with your work. And this is, this is not just from my opinion, this is throughout history. Unless you got the, you know, the craft lady who's painting googly eyes or pasting googly eyes on her propane tanks and she's making a killing with them, but she's not really an artist. And you step back, and I step back like that. Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of googly eyes on a propane tank? But they're not going to teach you about stuff like that in college. What you'll find in college is most professors and the teachers and the teaching assistants, especially the teaching, teaching assistants, have absolutely no experience in the real world. Because college is like a youth utopia. College is a little antiseptic world that doesn't know any troubles, doesn't know any real world experience. You're, you're being, it's kind of like a very expensive youth resort where you're paying money to learn, to party, to find a spouse. Guys and gals go down there to get laid, do drugs. There's, there's a whole subculture within that thing, but it's all about having fun. It's all about having a good time. It's really not about the real world because once you step off of that campus, you're going to get hit in the face of reality that being an artist, that most people, number one, don't care that you're an artist. Most people are not going to be impressed with your work. Most people aren't going to want to buy it. And you've got to figure out how to get people to buy it so you can make a living, so you can put food on the table, keep the utilities on, keep a roof over your head. If you want to do that strictly as an artist, this is what they'll tell you in college. This is what they told me. Well, you have a couple of options if you want to make a living as an artist. You can be a school teacher or you can work at Kinko's. And back then, Kinko's was a print shop. It was a shop where new graphic designers went to, to run print copies and do some basic graphic design work for businesses. Kinko's isn't even really around anymore. It is, but it's, it's a lot smaller. But basically, they're saying if you know, you've only got a couple of options. Now, today, as an artist, you're competing with the entire world. So college will give you some foundational skills, but you've got to figure out how to make your work stand out above and beyond millions and millions and millions and millions of other painters, sculptors, jewelry makers, because now you're competing with the, on the internet, and the internet is where everybody sells their crap or their artwork or whatever you want to call it. And you're going to have to figure out how do I market that? How do I make it stand out? How do I make myself look good? You've got, to, you've got to wear so many different hats. So college isn't going to teach you that. And everything I've learned about being an artist, I learned on my own. I learned it just by going out and doing it and meeting people and talking to them and meeting gallery owners and things like that. So I would not say don't go to college to be an artist. I would definitely go to a two-year school at first, go to your local community college to learn the basic foundational skills. It'll save you a ton of money. And then if you decide this is something you really want to do and you want to get a BFA, I would go to find a good school in your state where you don't have to go too far and, and don't go out of state because you'll, you'll spend out-of-state tuition, which is through the roof. But make sure it's something you want to do. Make sure you have a goal. Make sure you want to be an art teacher or make sure you know you want to do something with it. Have an idea what you want to do. Because you go to school just to get a BFA to get a and a BFA, it's a waste of your money. It's a waste of your time because you'll graduate and then you'll go get a job in a call center or you'll go get a job in a factory or working at Walmart or something. You'll forget all about it. I speak from experience because that's what I did. I didn't get my BFA, but I got a bachelor's in communications. But um, the bottom line is if you have the abilities and you know you have the abilities, consider college. Look into it. But it's not necessary. You don't have to have most everything I've learned about being an artist, other than my foundational skills, everything else I learned on the Internet. I learned it from YouTube and from reading books and from networking and meeting other people and meeting other artists said, oh, did you try this in this painting? I'm like, oh, no, I never thought of that. That's a good idea. So there you have it. Um, check your local community colleges. Start there. Um, otherwise, just learn tutorials. Look at all the tutorial, tutorials, all the different artistic tutorials on YouTube. All right, I'm PT Pop. Give it a thumbs up if you like my video. Subscribe. See you later. Bye.